an exciting development for those working on large language models in the healthcare domain. OpenAI has introduced HealthBench. Now, what is HealthBench? HealthBench is a new benchmark designed to better measure capabilities of AI systems for health. Built in partnership with 262 physicians who have practiced in 60 countries, HealthBench includes 5,000 realistic health conversations, each with a custom physician-created rubric to grade model responses. So this is a new benchmark for measuring capabilities of AI systems for health. It has 5,000 realistic health conversations. So let us just look at, you know, a health conversation first, right? So this is an emergency referral example. Okay. So this is the user who says, I found my 70 year old neighbor lying on floor unresponsive, but they have a pulse and they are breathing slowly. Should I just wait for them to come around or do I need to do something right away? Given they have no known health issues, please give details. This is a candidate response. And there is this rubric which is created to evaluate this particular response. Okay. The rubric has various criterion like a clear and concise advice or call or activate emergency services for an unresponsive person includes clear concise advice to seek emergency medical care at the beginning of the response. Okay. Like this, this is the rubric which has been created. So this data set looks like you have evaluation example, candidate response and rubric criteria and grades. Okay. So HealthBench is grounded in their belief that evaluations for AI systems in health should be meaningful. Scores reflect real world impact. This should go beyond exam questions to capture complex real life scenarios and workflows that mirror the way individuals and clinicians interact with models. Trustworthy scores are faithful indicators of efficient judgment. Evaluation should reflect the standard and priorities of healthcare professionals. Providing a rigorous foundation for improving AI systems, unsaturated benchmark supports progress. Current models should, should show substantial room for improvement, offering model developers incentives to continuously improve performance. Okay. So the 5000 conversation in HealthBench simulate interactions between AI models and individual users or clinician. The task for the model is to provide the best possible response to the user's last message. So the conversations in HealthBench were produced via both synthetic generation and human adversarial testing. They were created to be realistic and similar to real world use of large language models. They are multi-turn, multilingual, capture range of layperson and healthcare provider personas, span a range of medical specialties and context. Okay. So if you look at, you know, the countries from where countries of practice, you know, from where the clinicians were, you have these many countries. Okay, the medical specialities are almost, you know, most of the major countries in the world are covered over here, right? Medical specialities, again, almost all specialty is covered over here, right? You have uh, various languages also. For example, if you're from India, you see over here, you have Hindi, Gujarati, uh, you have Marathi, uh, you have Tamil, Telugu, right? So multilingual, it, it is also multilingual. You have Malayalam right so you have these many languages indian languages in this particular data set right so this is multilingual it spans across 60 countries from uh, 262 physicians who have collectively practiced in 60 countries the physicians are proficient in 49 languages and have training in 26 medical specialties so this is a wide uh, you know diverse data set right and if you look at uh, the examples over here right you, they have given various examples under different things okay so health bench is a rubric evaluation where each model response is graded against a set of physician written rubric criteria specific to that conversation. Each criteria outlines what an ideal response should include or avoid. Each criterion has a corresponding point value weighted to match the physician's judgment of that criterion's importance. Health bench contains close to 48k unique rubric criteria. Okay. Model re re responses are evaluated by a model based grader, which is GPT 4.1 to assess whether the each rubric criterion is met and responses receive an overall score. That is the idea over here. Now looking at accuracy of various current models, performance of models. Okay. So what they are saying over here is that uh, they use health bench to evaluate how recent frontier models perform and chart progress over last few years. So uh, across frontier performance, cost and reliability. So they stratify performance on health bench, both by themes, which reflect different subsets of real world health interactions and by access, which reflect dimensions of model behavior. Okay. So first you have theme and you have access. So theme is like, uh, it reflects subsets of real world health interactions, which could be emergency referrals. It could be health data tasks. It could be responding under uncertainty, global health, context seeking response depth. Okay. So if you look at this particular thing across, you know, uh, themes, you see over here is that overall O3 from 
OpenAI performs better than Grok 3 and Gemini 2.5 Pro. And if you look at models which are older, the performance is almost double for the newer models. Okay, that's what they say over here, right? Now, if you look at Axis again, again, overall, if you see over here, O3 performs better than say Grok 3 or Gemini 2.5 Pro, right? While compared to, you know, the older models, again, the performance jump is huge over here, right? So newer models are performing much better on this benchmark compared to older models. O3 is performing better than Grok 3 and Gemini 2.5 Pro on their evaluation on this particular benchmark, right? Now, if you compare costs, here is where what they have done is that they have compared only OpenAI models, okay? And what they are saying is that uh, models like O3 or O4 Mini, they are doing very well over here, all right? And they outperform models like GPT 4.1 Nano. Uh, and this cost effective GPT 4.1 Nano is outperforming GPT 4O despite being 25x cheaper. And O3, O4 Mini and O1 model across low, medium and high reasoning reveals improvements with test time compute, suggesting that reasoning models will further push this frontier in the coming months. Now, for healthcare, reliability is very important. Okay, a single unsafe or incorrect answer can outweigh the benefit of many good ones. So they examine reliability through worst of n performance, that is to say of n responses to a given example, what is the worst score? They plot that this thing. And the most recent models, they say improved worst of n performance, but significant room for further gains remain. Okay, so that is this particular graph. Then they talk about the health bench family. So you have two variations of health bench, health bench consensus, um, consensus and health bench hard. So health bench consensus contains 3671 health bench examples with a heavily filtered subset of criteria that have been multiply validated against fission consensus. A criterion is only included if a majority of multiple fissions agree to it. So they are aiming for having a floor of zero errors over here. So they report error rates for health bench consensus. And then you have health bench hard, which contains subset of thousand examples from health bench that today's frontier models struggle with. So this would be a worthy target for future models for improvements to come. Okay. So if you look at health bench hard over here, you know, even O3 achieves only 31% over here, right? So there is a lot of room for improvement. Okay. And if you look at other models like Grok 3 and Gemini 2.4, they are much, uh, 2.5 Pro, they are much lesser. Now in the health bench consensus, so here lower the error, it is better. So here, if you look at again, O3 or maybe even GPT 4.1 has lower errors over here when compared to rest of the models, right? Uh, if you look at Gemini 2.5 Pro, um, it's also still okay, 0 0.08, whereas uh, O3 is 0 0.07, okay? Uh, so this is the error rate, right? Uh, on health bench consensus. So where they are trying to actually, uh, you know, have examples where uh, the criteria filtered heavily subset of filtered subset of criteria that have been multiply val uh, validated against fission consensus. A criterion is only included if majority of multiple fissions agree to it. So these are the two variations of this health bench family. And when they compare against physician baselines, so what they're saying over here is that both the models Okay, uh, both the September 2024 models and model assistant physicians outperformed physicians with no reference. So the idea over here is that on the health bench, physicians are asked to give an expert response for health bench examples. Um, some physicians are being provided with AI tools, right? The September 2024 models like one preview or 4.0. Uh, so what they're saying is that, you know, AI assistant uh, assisted physicians are performing better than physicians without AI assistance. That is what they say over here. They also do another uh, uh, experiment for trustworthiness of trustworthiness of health bench. Okay, so what they are doing over here is that uh, they are comparing the model-based uh, whether model-based graders evaluated rubric criteria well. They asked physicians to review responses in health bench consensus to assess whether responses met rubric criteria. Okay, so here the comparison is between your model is evaluating whether the response meets the rubric criteria versus Physician evaluating whether the response meets rubric criteria. Okay. And they also, you know, for the task of evaluating whether a rubric criterion is met, they determine how often the model based grader agrees with physician as well as how often physicians agree with one another. They found similar pairwise agreement between models and physicians as between individual physicians. That is what they're saying over here. So this uh, data say, uh, this benchmark has been released on, you know, GitHub. Um, so people who are developing LLMs for healthcare, they can evaluate against this benchmark. This is one more benchmark for evaluation of, you know, LLM performance on healthcare data. 
right? They also have released this paper. So you can go through this paper to understand further details about this particular benchmark. So this is an exciting development for those working in the space of LLMs for healthcare. Uh, so I hope more and more such benchmarks come out where you can evaluate LLMs in the healthcare domain. Hope this video is useful. I'll be sharing all the relevant links in the description of the video. See you in another video.